Retro handheld sales have absolutely exploded over the last few years, and for most people what's important is that their handheld can run ports and emulate a number of consoles with good performance. But many retro handhelds run a version of Linux under the hood, and if you're a developer or you like to run custom code on your gaming consoles, then this presents an opportunity to easily run scripts and custom software on your handheld without needing any special tools or having to jailbreak your device. Today I'm going to show you how to run Python scripts and shell scripts on Linux-based Anbernic handhelds and how to do so without using SSH while still being able to see the output of the script on the device as it runs. The technique that I'm going to show you may work on other Linux operating systems, but the one that I'll be using is Unofficial OS. If you are following along and don't already have Unofficial OS installed, I definitely recommend that you first back up your current operating system or just use a separate micro SD card specifically for Unofficial OS. A lot of Anbernic handhelds come with pretty solid stock firmware in terms of emulation performance, and it's definitely worth it to keep a copy of your original firmware. Ultimately, I've found Unofficial OS to be the most well-rounded operating system for a mix of ports, emulation, and running custom code, but opinions differ quite a bit on this. I'll also be using my Anbernic RG353PS, but you can see the other devices that run unofficial OS and installation instructions for them on their releases page. I'll link to their GitHub and the releases pages in the description below. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just write a shell script and write a Python script, and they're gonna be very simple, sort of hello world type of scripts. So I'm gonna start with the shell script, and literally just do an echo statement uh, so you can um, see what some of the pitfalls are when you try to just run these scripts as they are on one of the handhelds. So I'm just going to run it on my computer now. And as you can see, it's just a hello handheld print, print statement. Okay, now I'm going to create a Python file uh, for the Python script. It'll be a little bit longer than the uh, shell script. And in this one, I'm just going to do another print type of statement. And then I'm also going to follow that with a for loop, which is just going to loop through a small array of Python list and print out the current value in that list with hello before it. And then following that print, I'm going to sleep it for one second to demonstrate another pitfall that you sometimes get when you run scripts on these handhelds. So now I'm going to run that test Python script. And as you can see, it's running and once a second, it is printing out the new item on the list. Now I'm going to take out the micro SD card of my Amberdict device and from slot two, the ROMs slot. I'm gonna put that into my computer. And then I'm going to take the folder that I have these two scripts on on my computer and copy that folder onto the micro SD card that I got from slot two on the Ambernic device. Now I'm gonna find navigate to the ports uh, directory from that slot to micro SD, and that's where I've pasted in this folder. Now I'm gonna eject it and take that out and then put that back into my Ambernic device in slot two. And this will allow me, since I put it in the ports folder, then when I go to the ports menu in emulation station, that folder will now be accessible from that menu. There's one problem though, is we don't see the Python script. We just see the shell script and we don't see the .sh. Further, when we run the shell script, we just get a blank screen and it doesn't do anything. So we have to find a way to get the output from our shell script and our Python script to actually show up on the screen when we run them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the redirection operator, which is this right arrow. I'm gonna send that to dev slash TTY zero, which is the 
uh, current virtual console, or essentially the current display. I'm then going to sleep it for a couple of seconds so that we can, so it doesn't just immediately exit. Uh, and then I'm gonna clear the virtual console uh, again so that I can write to it later and it won't just add to it. It will start, start over from the beginning. So the other problem was that our Python script did not uh, run at all because it wasn't present. We couldn't actually use it from the uh, ports interface. We, it was, we were in that folder, but we didn't see the script. So what we can do is simply create a shell script, which we can access from that menu um, through just using the normal buttons on the device. And we will use that shell script to actually um, call and trigger the Python script. So we're just gonna do an echo statement that again, we're using that redirection operator. We're gonna send that to the current console um, and the current virtual console. We're gonna sleep it for a couple seconds and then we're gonna clear the virtual console. Now notice that I put the full path, which is the path as it is according to unofficial OS, which considers it to be if, you, if you're in that slot two, that ROMs, then that, the unofficial OS considers that to be in storage slash ROMs slash ports. Whereas when I'm just in the micro SD and I've inserted that in my computer, that's just slash ports, that's it. Um, and that's just how the operating system interprets what's going on in slot two. So now that I've made those changes, I'm gonna reinsert the micro SD into my Anbernic device. And as you can see, we have both shell scripts available. Now, if we go to run the Python script, you'll see something. So we're not getting any output. And then all of a sudden, we get the output. But it's not each time it goes through the loop. It's all at the end and after all of those sleeps took place. So there's something going on in terms of the timing that we'll need to fix if we want it to print out once per second the way it was intended and the way it ran when we ran it on our computer. So we can easily modify the print statements in our Python script to actually print out uh, when they're called. We can't use print, but we can change it to OS system uh, to make a system call and then call the same thing we were doing before, an echo call, and print that out to the current virtual console. So we're again doing, we're using that redirection operator and sending it to slash dev slash tty0 for the current virtual console. So I'm just gonna do the same thing for both print statements and I'm going to use the, the exact same uh, strings um, and elements that we were using before, but now do a OS system call to print it rather than a Python print statement. And if we do it like this, hopefully when we run the script, it will print out and print in the same order and same timing that we had um, when we did so on the computer. So I'm just gonna move it over to my Ambernic device. And as you can see now, this time when we run the Python script, we get that hello number printing out once a second as intended. All right, now one last thing I wanna show you. You don't actually need to take the micro SD card out and edit the scripts on your computer if you don't want to, or if you're just making small changes to a number here or there. You can actually do this on the Ambernic device itself, um, which can be convenient in certain cases. So the way you wanna do this is to navigate to tools in Emulation Station and then 351 files. Uh, from there, you can find the ports folder and then you can select it, and then you can start editing any of the files, any of the scripts, Python scripts, shell scripts that you have in that folder. So once you've found the script that you want to edit, you can just hover over it and then press the A button, at least on my RG353PS, and then uh, go to edit as text. And there you will get a keyboard pop-up where you can actually make changes uh, and save the file. And then once you run the script again, those changes will take effect immediately.
You can actually create new files uh, this way as well. So you can write entire scripts on your handheld without ever uh, going on the computer. Obviously, this would be a bit tedious for longer or more complex scripts, but it does allow you to code on the go or make edits, or if you don't have your computer with you and you need to change the, the script you've built, then you can totally do that. If you're interested in seeing example code where I use this technique in a project, you can check out the RG353 Wi-Fi penetration tool that I built, which is essentially just using the same technique with a few Python scripts and shell scripts to do a penetration test on a wireless router that I own using the Anvernic RG353's onboard Wi-Fi chip to test out the PMKID exploit that came out in 2018. So if you're interested in seeing this kind of technique in action and also curious about cybersecurity, then take a look at the video short I put out on my channel a few weeks ago about it and also the code that's available on the Zero Day Arcade GitHub.